my roommate from medical school, um, who was in his early 30s at the time, was diagnosed with colon cancer. It kind of struck me as, well, this 30-something-year-old who had a wife and, and family was diagnosed with this terrible problem just out of the blue. Although he responded to treatment for a little while, he experienced what most patients will, and that's the tumors eventually figured out a way around the chemotherapy and around all the treatment. He died at a very young age of this disease. And that motivated me then and continues to motivate me now. I take care of patients with solid tumors or cancers, uh, and a lot of those patients have more advanced cancer that spread from where it started to a different place in the body. And that's what we have brought back to the lab to try to really understand that process. How, do, how and why do some cancers spread from where they start to other organs in the body? And how can we potentially learn more about that process to attack it or target it with new treatments? Right now, the traditional treatments for most solid tumors is chemotherapy. And that chemotherapy is very effective against the tumors, but at a cost. It's also very harsh or toxic to the body. But more importantly, the tumors eventually seem to figure out a way around these types of chemotherapy. The, the breast cancer is removed from the breast or the colon cancer from the colon and a portion of patients will be cured. But some of those tumor cells that escape in some patients that spread to the liver or to the bone or the brain, that's the real problem. That's why patients die of metastatic cancer or cancer that's spread. It's not that well understood how a tumor is able to gain the ability to spread. And we think the power of the genetic revolution and the genome revolution that we've been a part of here at WashU may, may have those answers. If we're now able to really probe at, at a level that we've never been able to do before, at a molecular level, at a DNA level. We see some clear differences in these tumors as they begin in the colon and spread to the liver. And I think there's gonna be some really, really important information there that we're just starting to dissect. Part of the paradigm that we've worked on is the success that Siteman has had in the past in these genetic aspects of cancer in leukemia and lymphoma and breast cancer. And we're building upon that in the world of metastatic colon cancer and in the world of melanoma, but it all builds off one another. We look at the experiences they've had, we use their expertise, we collaborate with them. The days of setting up your own lab and doing everything on your own is just gone because there's expertise that's required across so many different disciplines and the working together just creates this synergy and this energy that drives the results. The future of cancer care is a, a term that a lot of people have seen and heard. It's, we call it personalized medicine. And what that means is we're not going to take 100 patients with colon cancer and treat them all the same way. We're going to take patient number one and patient number two and patient number 100, and they're all going to get subjected to a very, very deep analysis of their tumors, probably at a very molecular and genetic level. And if you have a particular signature of your tumor, you're going to get this type of treatment. And the idea being we really want to maximize the chance of a treatment working and minimize the chance of you just having side effects or, or problems from a particular treatment. We can treat these patients longer and longer and use the word cure more often. But even if we're not using the word cure, we convert cancer into a more chronic disease. And what I mean by that is it's more like having high blood pressure or high cholesterol and something that can be managed over time with different regimens and, and improving that, uh, the, the treatment, but also maximizing the patient's quality of life. Almost all of my collaborators are, are people with large families and I have two kids with basically flowing red hair and blue eyes and I look at them and you just think, you know, at some point they're going to be out in the sun and these are kids that are high risk for melanoma. The money that we're spending now and the effort that we're spending now with the intersection of everything we're learning on the genetic side, everything we're learning on the immunology side and tying all this research together, I think we're going to have exceptionally novel treatments that we don't have now, that we dream about now, that 10, 15, 20 years are going to be a reality because of everything that we're working on and everything that Illumination and Siteman supports. You think on one hand, you know, everybody should go through taking a friend or a loved one through cancer, but of course nobody wants to do that. But what I learn from him, I take with me to almost every patient that I see and, and the research that we do, and you see how harsh chemotherapy can be on someone. You know, this is a 30-something with a young son that he has trouble interacting with. And you realize, you know, we, we can do better. We can try to find a treatment that may be very effective in treating the tumor that doesn't have all these side effects and affect quality of life.
to make sure that the cure isn't worse than the disease. We see what can happen to patients with cancer, and that's what drives us. There are people out there who can put pieces of the puzzle together. Our eyes have been totally opened. I can't believe how lucky I am. Children marrying and having grandkids. Have grandkids and see all of us get married. Look over the past 10 years and persist and persist until we find the right answers. It's such an exciting time because we are cracking the code. He can say, I'm in the right place, I'm in the right hands. When we look back five, 10 years from now, we're gonna say, we never would have gotten off the ground without this. You get to contribute to the ongoing miracle that they deliver every day. That's the key to hope.